Angel Falls, I give you Christmas. The lights are so pretty. This is perfect. What did you eat? still haunts me. Time to let that go. No one cares. Everyone would be better off if I was never born. Did you see that? Did the power go out? Oh my god. I stood under the aurora and said everyone would be better off if I never existed. Well wish granted. The angel strikes every couple of weeks. How can that be? Do I know you? It's Winnie. You know that. Okay. This her? Hi. Hi, I'm Henry Waters. You're safe now. He's not gonna get you. No one in this town knows me. Who are you? Dad. You weren't around to stop him, so he just kept going. He likes killing. I'm here now. Let's have some fun. Hey, you. Hey. Merry Christmas. We gotta stop him and get my life back. You'd be safe now. Please. You got me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, I saw your new movie. It's a wonderful knife. It's a fun little flick. Yeah, it's just a charming little slasher. I had someone message me last night and say it may be the sweetest slasher they've ever seen, um, which is cool. Yeah. It's great. And and I love the, the mix of the horror and the comedy. And it's because it's, Oh, I'm so sorry. One second. Would you have a I'm sorry. No worries. Curse of having dogs. Um, <laughs> I have two, so I, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, it's that time of day. Um, sorry, but anyway, but no, it's it's definitely it's a fun film, and I love that that little bit of um. Kind of, you, you get that sense of a classic, like, you know, it's a wonderful life, but at the same time, it's completely new and fresh and yeah. different. And that that's amazing. Um, I have to ask, um, can you tell me anything about the design of the angel? So the angel, yeah, that, um, the, the look was, not the look, but the template was written into the script. I literally described the killer as wearing white from head to toe, including white gloves, white boots, white, white, everything, white mask. Um, and I referred to him in the script as the angel. Um, so Tyler and our costume designer, Matea and a couple other people, they really then took the description I had in the script. Cause I had the dagger completely um, scripted too, like with, even like the silver blade with the gold handle and all that stuff, like all that was written out, but they did a really good job of interpreting what I put on paper to a visual look. And Tyler, pretty sure Tyler had like a really specific look he wanted. I know he always mentioned that he wanted the mask to look like one of those frosted light bulbs that people put for Christmas. And it was really important for him that anytime we were in a scene with lights that they would reflect off the mask too. Um, so then he and Matea and her team really worked together to create the final look of what you see. And the fun thing about that is there was three different versions of the mask, um, which we had like a full white one for close-ups. And then we had somewhere there was, if you watch the movie close enough, you can actually kind of see them and piece it together. There's somewhere that there's like more of an eye to it. So the 
stunt person Cody could actually see out of the thing because the completely white one, you can't see at all. Like I put that mask on and I was like, oh my God, I can't see a thing. Um, so yeah, that's where that the, the, the look came. Where did the idea for the story come from? Um, the idea of the story came from, I really enjoyed my time on Freaky and I wanted to do another mix of old and new, quite frankly. And I also always wanted to do a Christmas horror movie. Um, I think Black Christmas is easily one of my favorite movies ever made, let alone horror movies ever made. So I wanted to play in that wheelhouse, but with my sensibility, um, a little bit more fun. You know, Black Christmas 74 is awesome, but it's pretty dark. Um, and I also loved It's a Wonderful Life. It was the yearly watch with my family growing up. It was my dad's favorite Christmas movie. So I thought it was a nice way to kind of play in that in that wheelhouse, but also honor my dad who passed away in 2018 and kind this of have awesome. something. Oh, thanks. But it was kind of something that we could like still share um, in a way. Um, so that's kind of what inspired the movie. Well, that's that's a, a nice touch to the story. It yeah. is. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because my dad, yeah. dad loved that movie and my family loves that movie. So it's like, well, here's kind of my version, guys. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I lost my, so I know how, I know the feeling, I understand. Yeah. Sorry, too, yeah. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of action that goes on in It's a Wonderful Night. How did you do that with all of the, the young cast since, I, I know they're probably not teenagers, right? but, uh, but they're young. How did y'all kind of choreograph those? Uh, Tyler works with our stunt coordinator to essentially choreograph every chase sequence or attack scene. Um, Tyler literally, Tyler McIntyre is the director. He literally had the whole movie in his head. Um, so, and he's also an editor too, which is helpful because then when he and the cinematographer and the stunt people were like planning shots and that kind of stuff, he could already see in his head like what the final outcome would be which is really beneficial because we shot on a really fast schedule. We didn't have a lot of rehearsal time. So Tyler really had to come in prepared every day with visually what he wanted it to look like. And then him and the stunt coordinator would kind of work on the blocking and the, the fight maneuvers and those kind of things together. It was really collaborative. Well, there's some, some really nice uh, death scenes in those, which is, is, you know, important for a film like this. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So was there kind of like a, a some fantasy kills you had floating in your head before you wrote it or did they? Yeah, I wanted uh, to do a Christmas style kill, like something Christmassy. So that's where the candy cane came from. Um, you know, I always think, too, if you're not going to utilize the holiday at least once in one of your murders in one of these movies, it's like, what are you doing? Um, and then I had some other stuff I wanted to do. We just couldn't do for with time and budget and stuff. but. Um, but as far as the kills, I had a couple that I wanted to do. The candy cane was definitely one of them. But I also knew from the very beginning, too, I didn't want the killer to be a Santa Claus that people usually expect in these movies. I, so that's where the angel came from as well. It's like I wanted another kind of iconic look, but also something that still stuck with the holiday, which angel, an angel does. You know, I mean, isn't it essentially an angel that comes to Mary and is like, boom, you're pregnant? Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah. That's great. And he, and he looks good and it's definitely a costume that you could see somebody, you know, being for Halloween since, you know, that's totally, coming. totally. And so I wanted it, we all wanted it to look cause people have kind of gotten in the habit in the new slasher movies. Um, to, they're kind of doing a lot of black hoodie with a mask type stuff. And we knew going in that we wanted like a look from head to toe. Right. You know? Right. And it's, in, there's, you know, quite a few great things about your movie. And which isn't surprising because I like Freaky. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, you know, and I love that, you know, in both films, you have strong female protagonists which I think is important these days. Yeah, 100%. Super important. When it came to casting those characters, was there something you specific had in mind or was it just a matter of finding the right one? 
Yeah, it was finding the right person, you know, working on Freaky and knowing Chris Landon really well and seeing how he cast his movies and like we're working on some stuff together now that we talk about cast and stuff. That really helped in kind of, at least for me as a producer, kind of writing to the type of person we wanted. And just knowing someone that could pull off the physicality and also being in almost every scene and being in, you know, Jane who we end up casting as Winnie was was a unanimous choice once we saw their tape. Um, it was like, that's exactly what we're looking for. And with Yellow Jackets, we knew that they could play and darken and like, you know, so that was really helpful. But I also, yeah, I kind of knew going in that I wanted somebody that can handle all the different tones. Um, but we also did get lucky in going when we saw Jane's tape. Oh, they're the one, you know. Oh, well, they're you know, good casting choices. They really were. It's they fit their character very well. Yeah, and Jess is a real standout as Bernie. They're another one that you know we knew. I knew when writing the movie, I wanted someone that looked a little different, but was still attractive, but also could be a punching bag but also be strong enough to get over being not get over but also power through the being a punching bag type thing and Jess was another one as soon as we saw their tape we were like oh holy shit they're burning you know like um I wanted someone that didn't look like like for Bernie I wanted especially someone that didn't look like they came off a magazine or right. looked at the typical quote unquote movie star. And I think Jess, who's so beautiful, but is also so quirky looking, is perfect for, for the role. Yeah, nice I mean, it was a good choice. Yeah. Um what do you what do you think about the similarities between Freaky and It's a Wonderful Night? Because they're, you know, there's there's some things, it's just kind of a vibe that it gives off. Yeah, you know, it's on purpose. I mean, I wrote Freaky, so I kind of, you know, like Chris and I wrote Freaky and that's, we both share a similar sensibility. So when I set off to do this on my own, it was kind of the same thing. It was like, let's hit that same wheelhouse, but in a little bit of a sweeter way. Freaky has some really great emotional character work and it has that really amazing emotional scene with um, Vince Vaughn and Katie Finneran where they're in the, the dressing room talking about life and death and that kind of thing. And I knew I wanted that sentimentality as well, but also Christmas movies have a tendency to be a little schmaltzy and a little bit campy and a little bit endearing. And I want it, I, and I say all those in a positive way. I love that about Christmas. I love Christmas. People know me as a horror guy and a Scream, huge Scream fan, and I love Halloween, but I love Christmas just as much. And I knew I wanted to bring all those qualities to the forefront of the movie that I didn't do in Freaky to kind of separate it. But I also wanted it to live kind of in the same world. You know, it was funny. I got a text the other day from somebody that was like between Happy Death Day, Freaky, Totally Killer, and It's a Wonderful Knife. They were like, I wish I wish I could see a movie with those four protagonists in the same world kind of living. And I was like, that's actually really funny. But it, it's not a coincidence that they're all kind of living in that same wheelhouse, you know? I love it. I think it's super fun and it's fresh and it's different and it's new and I don't know. It's what I like to do. Well, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. I mean, we we really did need some more quality holiday horror movies. Exactly. That was another reason I set out to do it. I was like, there's not enough Christmas horror. Why don't I just do one myself if I can? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, it's great. Um, and you said kind of mentioned something a second ago about like, is there another project in the works? Uh, Chris and I have a couple things going on that I can't really, really talk about, but yeah, we have some we have some stuff cooking, cooking heavily, <laughs> which is great. Um, I can't. It, it's not scream. <laughs> but would any any chance be a horror comedy? Yep. Yep. Good. You're good at it. Yeah. yeah. We're excited. Good I actually just got a text from him about 10 minutes ago telling me he was finishing up a scene in the script. So I was really excited. Yeah, we're really excited about this one. I can't wait. Yeah. It, 
Are we going to see any of the characters or the the cast return? Um, meaning, in if we did a sequel to Knife or or to to your next project, are we going to see? Oh. Any of well, the next project's an original, so feature all new people and stuff. Um, so yeah, it'll be exciting. We're hoping it shoots next year, so it'll be here hopefully before people know it. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm a fan, I and mean, you do have a definitely have a, a talent for horror well, comedy, and horror in general. But I'm a big fan of horror comedy. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate it. me Love too. That, that aspect of you know laughing one minute and the next minute you're screaming at your TV for somebody not to go that way. Yeah, and they're, they go hand in hand, right? They're kind of the same coin, other side of each of the coin. So it's really fun. Although I'm really excited. I have another project in the works too that is really dark for me. So I'm really excited to play in that. A lot more adult um, in a, like a, definitely a darker type of horror movie. So I'm really excited for that to flex some muscle, new muscle there. Um, so yeah. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and before I forget, I have to say something about Justin Long. Oh my God. <laughs> Those teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Those veneers. Wow. Like very expensive veneers. Yeah, that was a Justin Long uh, pitch to us as a film team. And yeah, first we all kind of cocked our head and like, what is he going to go for here? But then it works. It really works. And it does. I, I, I love that he's so committed to the role that when he did ADR on the movie over the summer, he we didn't know this, but I guess he had, I wasn't in the session because I was on strike, so I couldn't be in the session. But him and the director did this ADR session and they did it over Zoom because Justin's in Connecticut and Tyler is in LA. So they did it over Zoom. And he said right before Justin started the session, he like pulled the teeth out of his pocket and popped them in. So I guess he kept the teeth. <laughs> And he did eight, the whole ADR session with the teeth in, which I'm like, that is cool. Oh, that's great. That yeah. is, I love it. Yeah. And, and such a talented guy. Yeah, he's but great. The whole cast was good. I mean, Joel McHale, Jane, they were all just perfect fits. It's great casting. Yes, it was, it was, it was fantastic. And I love the... I don't know. I hope I'm not going to give away any spoilers on this, but I love the way that she was involved with the Aurora. Uh, I can't even talk. The Aurora Borealis. Uh huh. I love the way that that was used in the film. Yeah, yeah, that was a pitch from uh, somebody to me, and my initial draft didn't have it. Um, it was a little bit more. Uh, it's less magical or more magical, or she just kind of. Winnie just kind of makes the wish and then the wind blew and all that kind of stuff. And someone pitched the idea of that to me. And I was like, oh, that actually could work really well in the sense of it being a time, like a like a ticking time bomb type thing. And also having an abs, like having something with texture and almost like you could feel it and touch it. And it ended up really as I kept writing the movie being like its own character, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's it I, if I'm thinking correctly, it's like the first time that's ever been used in a horror film like that. So. Yeah, I feel like it. I've never really seen that before either. Um, definitely not a movie. movie. So um, it, was, it was a nice twist on the whole story that, you know, being added in. So It was fun having like Allure to work with and giving Bernie some really fun stuff with the Aurora and her, her addiction to research and that kind of stuff. So it was... Yeah, it was really after I, I think it was one of the producers pitched that to me after I turned in the first draft. So we really ran with it and I worked really hard on that. It was, it was it was a great touch. It really Thank was. It was. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. A rarity in horror movies these days. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, 